One of the funniest things to do and one of the biggest memes in the HVAC industry is having the new guy go and diagnose a low voltage short. High voltage is easy. It's the power coming in, going to the fans, and going to the compressor. Low voltage is a different animal. Not only do you have all the pieces inside of a furnace like this or an air handler, you have the thermostat to contend with and you have the whole outdoor unit that you can't even see when you're working on this. So today I'm going to teach you the basics on how to find a low voltage short using a couple of the products from the channel partner HVAC Guys. They sent out a couple of cool low voltage testing tools that are going to help out with diagnosing low voltage shorts. These are the 3 and 5 amp fuse savers which are going to go in place of your fuse on your control board so if you do make a mistake and accidentally ground out a circuit while you're testing it, you can just press the button and reset it and try again. The short saver is a pretty cool tool. It allows you to check multiple circuits at one time and when it lights up on the end, it's going to tell you that that's the direction you need to go because that's where your short to ground is. Here's the game plan. We have a control board here, we have a faulty contactor, and these alligator clips are going to act as our thermostat. Here's a breakdown of a contactor and why this one is faulty. On the back here you have an electromagnet and on your side is where you connect your 24 volt from your thermostat. When these get energized, this bridge closes from the electromagnet and that is what sends power, your 240, through the contactor to your compressor, your fan, to turn it on. I pulled this one out of a system because when the thermostat was actually sending power to the outdoor unit to turn on, it would send power to these two posts, it would go through the contactor and immediately pop the fuse inside because that became grounded. Now let's go ahead and test this contactor just to make sure. Zero point five ohms, that is a dead short. Now let me show you what a good system is supposed to look like. When the system is working correctly, our fuse will be good, meaning that we have 24 volts to R and C on the control board. Yep, right there, 28 volts. So when our thermostat sends power somewhere, things should turn on, right? Now let's introduce our messed up contactor to break the system on purpose and see what happens. Right now the system is still working, but the moment we send power over to this contactor, it's going to blow the fuse. There we go. Once you're done with this video, the only blown fuse you're going to have is the one you pull out the system. So for this test, I want to reestablish power to the 24 volt circuit. This was a 3 amp fuse, so I'm going to hook up the 3 amp fuse saver from HVAC guys. It's pretty simple. The fuse is already slotted in. All I got to do is take my whip, slot it into the same exact spot on the control board. And now I have a resettable breaker just in case I accidentally trip it. So this tool is really good for going in completely blind. You can hook it up, take a jumper, and go to each individual terminal to a bunch of different circuits except for C and hold it there for a little bit and see what does and doesn't pop the, uh, the button on top. For example, if I go here to Y2, nothing should happen except for the blower turning on. We're good. If I go to W1, Inducer kicks on, nothing. Won't go to common, that's immediately shorted. If I go to G, which is the blower, I've got nothing. D hum on this control board, that's gonna be nothing. Now, we already know that this is where the problem is. The moment we hook it up to Y, it's gonna spark a little bit, give it a second, just like we did all the rest of them, and this pop, this top is going to pop. Spark, pop. That was our chance to go to the outdoor unit, find out what's going on. Is it the wiring coming in? Is it the wiring next to the compressor on the high pressure switch, low pressure switch, whatever? Oh, let's go ahead and check the contactor. That's where our problem is. Let's go ahead and replace the contactor, since we have one here, and run the test again. Just to let you know, when you are looking at a good contactor versus a bad one, this one obviously is at zero. A good contactor is going to be running around 12 to 16 ohms. That's what I've found a good contactor to read. Hook up our new contactor. Now with the new contactor, we can go ahead and reset our fuse saver. The power is stored. The moment I go to test it on Y, I should hear a click and nothing else. Contact is good to go, that solved our problem. Now let's make this troubleshooting just a little bit easier by using the short saver. And to do this, we're gonna hook up our bad contactor again. The short saver is very simple. We have two alligator clips and on the end of the barrel, we have an LED light. What we're gonna do is we're gonna attach one of our leads to our power. We're gonna hook one lead up to R. We're gonna take the other lead and we're gonna tap it across our terminals until we get this light to turn on. So we just test it across, nothing. Nothing. C will actually make it turn on, because that is a short. Nothing. 
nothing. Here's our contactor. Boom, there's our light, there's our short. Now we know exactly where to go. The short saver is really just an upgraded version of an alligator clips that's gonna walk us directly to where the problem is. The final method we're gonna use is using the continuity sensor on your multimeter. Switch it over to ohms, tap your leads together. That beep means that there is a direct short. Instead of putting one lead on R, we're actually gonna start with one lead on common. If we go straight to R, that is a dead short because R to C, dead short. Nothing, 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 contactor, short. Now once you're done, all you gotta do is take all your stuff off. Now technically our contactor would have been already fixed, so let's go ahead and throw the new one on and get it tested up. We can put the new fuse in, the fuse that's actually going to be permanent because the last thing I'm doing is leaving my fuse saver here for someone else to you know, steal later on. Boom, fuse is fixed. Let's go ahead and test our contactor. Good to go. Just like anything, troubleshooting low voltage really comes down to mastering the basics. Once you get this nailed down and you come across more impressively difficult stuff, you're gonna be able to figure that out no problem. Big thank you to HVAC Guys for sending these tools out so we can make today's video possible. If you're interested, I will leave a link down below in the description. Best way to support the channel is to pick up an HVAC quick reference card, link down below, hit the like button, subscribe to see more in the future, and I'll see y'all in the next one.